Oh, it says low network connection. Hopefully it's working. Wait for a couple people to get on here. If you want to watch these on Instagram or YouTube, the reason there's a delay in the beginning is because when you go live on Facebook, it takes a while for people to join. And I don't want to talk to myself, so I wait for people to join. And we have four. Hi, Jane. How are you? Okay, we have seven. Let's jump into it. Um, today, I want to talk briefly, 10 or 15 minutes, because I'm tired and want to go to bed. Um, and the topic is going to be ways to stay connected through this, okay? Ways to stay connected through this. I'm going to give you some initial thoughts, and then I'm going to give, going to give you a couple very, very practical ideas of ways to stay connected through this, okay? Um, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about loneliness. So obviously, many of us are dealing with mild to severe loneliness right now. Um, and if you're a widowed person, or if you're a divorced person, or if you're somebody who's already kind of dealing with loneliness before this, this has just kind of made it worse. But for a lot of us, this isn't very new. And as somebody who has, if I'm being completely honest, dealt with loneliness a lot in his life, again, this is, you know, an intensified version of it, but it's not something entirely new. Hi Hope, hi Wade, uh, hi Lee, <laughs> hi Wade. Um, use your last name there. So, you know, the loneliness you're feeling right now, a lot of us are feeling it. You're not alone in that, as weird as that sounds. We are emotional beings, okay? We are emotional beings. We crave human connection. And again, for so many of us, we might not have been getting that before, at least not enough. Um, and now, again, it's just that much worse. So I wanna give you guys a couple practical tips of ways to stay connected through this. Um, first of all, right now is not the time to be stubborn. If you're a stubborn person, unstubbornize yourself. Because it's not cute right now, and it's not the time to be stubborn. Okay, right now is not the time to let your ego get the best of you. Right now is not the time to act based on ego or insecurities or being stubborn. Um, hi, John. Hi, Martha. Hi, Anita. Hi, Rhonda. Um, you know, I know a lot of people might be watching this and they might be, as I'm going to get into my bullet points here, thinking, oh, well, John, it's easy for you to say that because, you know, you have a lot of people checking in on you. Don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. We assume we know things about people. I don't have many people checking in on me. My wife is no longer living. I don't have a significant other. I wasn't dating anybody before this. Clearly, I'm not dating anybody through it. I have some people checking in on me, a couple. But for the most part, I'm checking in on people. I'm taking the initiative to say, I'm gonna be one of the people who makes the effort. So right now, again, it's not the time to be stubborn and say, well, nobody's checking in on me and I'm not gonna check in on anybody either. It's not the time for that. It's not the time to base your actions based on ego. It's not the time to base your actions based on insecurities, okay? Right now is the time, if you want more of a human connection, to open up that heart, to let go of that stubbornness, to let go of that ego, to let go of, that insecurity, of those insecurities and to reach out. Um, so let me give you guys a couple practical tips. So before you go to bed every night or when you wake up in the morning with your cup of coffee, whenever, whenever you're kind of of clear mind and whenever you kind of realize like maybe your anxiety is um, not as bad as other times of the day. So again, for me, it would either be before I go to bed or when I wake up in the morning. Write down three people that you want to reach out to that day, okay? It could be, you know, real life friends, like people that you know and you've met personally. It could be family members. It could be old college friends. It could be people who took care of your spouse in the hospital. It could be Facebook friends. Um, 
It could be neighbors across the street. It could be elderly people in your neighborhood. Write down on a piece of paper with pen three people that you want to reach out to that day. And I'm doing that every single day. So every single night before I go to bed, I write those people down and I reach out to them. If you reach out to more, fantastic. But at least you're reaching out to three. Um, One of the other things I'm suggesting to clients is see if you know somebody who might want to do a daily check-in with you. So again, it could be, yeah, it could be your best friend, but let's say you don't have a best friend because your spouse was your best friend, which is my situation. Um, It could be a neighbor that you met for coffee a couple of times. It could be, you know, again, the nurse that you became friends with that took care of your husband and you're really close with them now. Um, It could be somebody that's just an acquaintance, but you know, maybe also suffering from loneliness. See if there's somebody you can agree to a daily check-in with and set the parameters for what that looks like. So is it going to be a texting daily check-in? And I'm going to read your comments and answer some questions after. Is it going to be a texting daily check-in? Are you guys going to have a phone call? Are you going to do FaceTime? Set the parameters because for every person right now who is craving that connection, who is craving talking to people, there are people right now who are also maxed out. And, you know, they're working from home and they've got three kids running around completely crazy and they don't have the space for that. So if you do reach out to somebody and say, hey, you know, would you be interested in, you know, a daily check in with me? Um, Don't take it personally if they're not. But if they are, again, set those parameters for what that looks like. Okay, phone call, FaceTime, text, how long you guys might do it. So if one person really only kind of has 30 minutes available in their day and you have all day. So no feelings get hurt. You're kind of agreeing to 30 minutes beforehand. Um, There was something else I wanted to say on that. What else did I want to say on that before I go to the next thing? Oh, and if you can do like a time of the day. Hi, Tatiana. So if you can say like every day we're going to check in at 4 p.m. That gives you something to look forward to every day right now. So if you're dealing with not only loneliness but boredom, now 4 p.m. every day you're going to check in with your neighbor and you're going to have a 20-minute call to see how each other is doing okay um group chats setting up group chats with three friends 20 friends family members that's also a good idea to stay connected but you might want to ask people before you set up a group chat um just putting you know that mom whose husband passed away and has three kids at home right now running around like crazy people and she's kind of at her max, just adding her to a group chat with 20 people so her phone absolutely blows up. <laughs> hi, Rebecca. My, hi, Crystal. Might not be the best idea. So asking people, hey, we're going to start a group chat with you know these 12 people. We would love for you to be involved. Way to check in. Um, way to kind of curb the loneliness. Would you be interested? And then they can say yes or no. Or if they say no, they can come back to you in a week and they decide they want in. Um, or if they say yes and it's too much, they can opt out. But group chats help. Um, Facebook groups. You can create Facebook groups. You can go on right now and create a Facebook group that says, um, hi, Chris, that says Chris and friends. So, Chris, you can do that. You can create a Facebook group. It says Chris and friends. And you can ask 12 friends if they want in. And if eight of them say yes, now you guys have your own Facebook group where you can communicate every day. You can also do that via Facebook Messenger. So I didn't even know this until a couple months ago. Via, slow down here a little bit. Slow down, John. Slow down. I want to go to bed. So I'm rushing. Um, Facebook Messenger, if you have a group chat with like two people, or I think it's up to 50 people, you can actually turn that into a video chat. So you can, let's say there's six people in it, and you can press video, and then anybody who wants to opt in can opt in. And now you and, you know, four or five of your friends are all kind of seeing each other and you're seeing what you're doing and you're having a drink together or you're eating chocolate cake together or you're watching a movie together or whatever you want to do. Um, Let's see what else I have here. I think Zoom probably has similar stuff. So if you don't want to do Facebook, but you like that idea, check out Zoom. Um, If you're journaling, I know a lot of my clients right now are journaling. Sometimes we just want somebody to see our words. We want somebody to see them. Ask a friend. Hey, I've been journaling, I've been letting out a lot of emotion, I've been letting out a lot of thoughts, and I want somebody to see it. Would you be able to read it? 
okay? Um, let me read a couple of these before I finish off. Hi, Rhonda. Tatiana says, hold on, I need to check my food delivery. Okay, Tatiana, I guess I'll hold on for you then. <laughs> Let's read Penny. Let's see if I can... Penny says, the keto group I am in is having a 30-day challenge where we have five things to check off every day, not related to food. Things like get moving, reach out to someone. Yeah, that's another great idea, Penny. Um, let me scroll down here. Ah, I can't scroll down. Oh, there we go. Um, if you have a friend or a group who want, and you guys want to do like accountability, um, so it doesn't often all have to be like check-ins and talking to and stuff like that. You can also have an accountability. If you like to work out, for instance, an accountability buddy um, can be a good thing. Um, I think that a lot of us feel obviously unbelievably lonely right now. And I think it's easy, especially for like widowed people or, or people who already felt lonely to kind of get wrapped in the, I have nobody, I have nobody, I have nobody. Look, we might not have who we want, okay? We might not have our spouse, which is the person we really want. And maybe even other people in our lives have let us down. Widowed people lose 70% of their circle. I get the loneliness. I get it. Like on a personal level, I get it. But I do think that if we expand our minds a little bit and are a little bit liberal with our thinking, we do have more people in our life than we want to give ourselves credit for, okay? Um, one of the things I did was I made a list, and I'm, I'm going to recommend it for you guys if you're, I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to do it. To kind of combat my own loneliness, and I did this months ago, it was way before the coronavirus, um, I made a list and it had three columns. And if you do this, do it with paper and pen, three columns. The first column is going to be people you have in your life that you're close to that bring you joy. Okay. Um, so, you know, if you have a cousin Susie you're close with, but you absolutely can't stand her and she's very toxic, don't add her to the list. People you have in your life that you're close to that bring you joy. That's the first column. Second column is people you're kind of, kind of close to, like their acquaintances, a neighbor down the street you've had coffee with a couple times. So you're not close with them, but you know them. Again, they're friends, they're acquaintances, people who are in your life, but not super close, okay? And then the third column is social media friends. So people that you talk to on social media, that you know on social media, but maybe you've never met in person. Write down absolutely everybody you can think of. Again, be liberal with the list. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking, well, you know, the person I used to work with in my old job, we went out to lunch a couple times and we got really got along, but I haven't seen them in four months. No, I didn't say be stubborn with the list. I said be liberal with the list, okay? Um, you're not alone with your loneliness. You're not alone with the craving of the human connection. And if we just sit back and we just let our ego and our insecurities and our stubbornness get the best of us because people aren't reaching out, we're not doing our part. 98% of the people I have talked to in the last week have been because I have reached out, because I have made the effort. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, I have to make the effort all the time. No, I want to make the effort. Everyone is on their own shit right now, excuse my language. Everyone's head in a tailspin. Reach out to people. Connect with people. Hop on FaceTime with people. Watch your favorite movie with your best friend on FaceTime. Have a drink with somebody over Zoom. Start groups. Ask people first, but start groups. Start group chats. I have a friend who messaged me the other day. She might be watching. And she's like, you know, I met this guy online. I'm like, oh, cool. Have you, you know, have you seen him yet? Because we can't leave the house. And she's like, well, we did a, you know, a FaceTime kind of date. I'm like, perfect. So I guess we can still date, even with this virus. Um, okay, so 
I just want to give you guys a couple tips. Let me tell you a couple things I'm going to be talking about this week coming ahead, and then I'll read a couple of your comments. And if you have questions, ask them now because it takes a little bit of a uh, minute or two to populate on this. So I want to this week talk to you about, you know, how we view other people right now. I want to kind of lay out some stories for you about other people's struggle, about their fear, about their pain. I think it's really important that we open our mind that while everybody's going through different things, it's affecting everybody in some way. Okay, and I'm going to tell you guys some stories. I'm going to go through some stuff that I think is going to open your mind. Um, I also want to talk this week about, you know, I'm having a lot of clients ask me like, you know, I, I had a falling out with somebody. And I kind of want to reach out to him now. But is it a good idea to do that? And when my clients ask me, I usually know the backstory. So I usually am able to kind of help them more. So when I talk about it to you guys, it's going to be kind of a generic thing, right? Because every situation is different. But I want to give you my thoughts on that because I think it's important. Um, I have about 20 other things I want to talk about. There was one more. I'm going to try to do three lives this week. Um, but I forgot what it was. So you'll find out. Uh, so let me just take a couple questions or read what you guys say. So Crystal says, I feel like some people get sick of me calling them. And that goes back to what I was talking about, Crystal. Like, first of all, you know, I don't know if they're actually getting sick of it. It's, of you, it's possible, even though I love you. Um, but that sounds more like your ego and your insecurities. And that also is where parameters come into play. Telling somebody like, oh, I love this one. So people who already clicked off, you're going to miss this one. That's what you get for clicking off early. Um, you know, I love, like, if you want to talk to somebody who you also know is kind of stressed, asking them if they have the mental and emotional space right now, right? I did that with a friend a couple weeks ago. I was having a bad day and I needed to talk to somebody. And I said, when you have the mental and emotional space, can you give me a call? So yes, reach out to people, but we also really have to understand that people are maxed out and they can't pour from an empty cup just like we can't pour from an empty cup. So we all have to work in this together and not get so insulted if somebody can't be there for us at that time. Also though, and I mean, I talk about this with my one-on-one -on -one clients all the time. I'm not going to get into it right now. Um, we are run by ego and insecurities. We are run by them. Okay. We are emotional beings and so often our emotions get the best of us and it is completely counter to what the reality is. So I don't know about those people, Crystal, but what I do know is like, you might be having that feeling with somebody who absolutely looks forward to your call every day. Your call every day is the best thing that is happening to them right now, but you feel like you're annoying them. Um, all right, so I'm gonna read a couple of these things. Steph says, I got tired of reaching out to others and hitting a wall. This was months ago. I do connect with long distance friends. For now, it's okay. Just wanted to connect with local people again or meet new ones. Maybe after the time passes. I understand. And that's what I've been talking about. If you haven't watched the whole thing, go back and watch it if you have time. Um, it can get very discouraging when you do try to reach out, when you do try to connect with people. And for whatever reason, it doesn't happen. Okay? Um, it can get very discouraging. But it's kind of like anything else in life. If you know you love tacos, like you love tacos and you move to a new city and it's a small little town and the first taco place you go, the tacos suck. No oh, network connection. Hopefully you guys can still see me. Are you going to find the tacos that work for you? So friendship is kind of like dating in a sense. Like if you go on one date, are you going to completely give up on finding somebody? Probably not. I would hope not. Um, and it's the same thing with friendship and connecting right now. Just because you might reach out to one person or two people or three people or even four people and it's not reciprocated for whatever reason, don't give up because that fifth person you reach out to might be just as happy to have you in their life as you are them. We don't need a lot of people in our life to make a huge difference. Whenever I have a client call me and they're dealing with profound loneliness and maybe their spouse was their only person in their social life and now we have to start kind of from scratch and rebuild. 
I always try to tell them, you're one or two good friends away from a completely different life. For those that want to start dating again, you're one person away from a completely different life. And the same thing right now. If you're suffocating in this house and you need connection, you're only one or two people away from kind of finding that connection, okay? Um, do you guys like how I do my little dance right there? It's my uncomfortable dance. Let's see if anyone else has any questions. Hi, Karen. Absolutely, Lisa, that's what I was talking about early on. Um, for widowed people, some of us, this kind of feels like the norm, right? Um, we make effort, we go out when we can, we have our communities, we have our friends, but there's a lot of lonely time. So this is not, you know, necessarily that big of a difference to what some of us experience normally. Lulu, it is hard. My condolences to you. It's been 10 months for you. Um, I'm going to read a couple more here. Let's see until I see people kind of getting off in mass. So, Lulu, um, I'm just going to say this, even though, you know, some people think that John Polo is the one person in the world who should just do his work for free now and not be able to feed himself and not keep a roof over his head. If anybody needs me more than what I provide on the social media. I'm still doing my one-on-one -on -one coaching. I still offer the virtual workshops. I still have three books out. I'm here. Um, again, to the people who don't like that, I'm sorry, I need to eat. I need to eat too, so, you know, that's okay. I can't be a life coach, you know, doing my entire career for free here and uh, just, you know, I don't know, living on the streets, I guess, because some people think I should, so, <clears throat> sorry, I have to get that off my chest. Um, hi, Rebecca. Thank you, Lee. Anybody have any questions? You know, I read something the other day that said, if you're, it says something along the lines of like, if you're tired, like if your soul is tired, it's because you're not doing the right thing. Like you're not doing what you love. And I have to tell you guys, no matter how tired I am, no matter how mentally or physically or emotionally exhausted I am, um, even if I'm having a bad MS day, if I get on my coaching calls, or if I have to do a virtual workshop, or if I have to give a speech, or host an in-person workshop, or if I come on and do one of these, it brings me back to life. Like, it gives me an energy bolt. And that's how I know that I'm doing the right thing. Um, bye, Penny. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for reading them, Julie. Okay. Oh, there's people, Sophia. There's very ignorant humans out there um, who don't care what I may be doing behind the scenes. They only just want to attack me because. All right. Um, what day is today? Sunday. Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm gonna come on probably and do the, let's look at other people's pain and fear and talk about that. I'm really looking forward to that one. And then we'll do the, um, they, um, should I reach out? Should I reach out to somebody I had a falling out with? And then we'll take it from there because I know I'm going to come on every two or three days and talk to you guys. Love you guys. Have a good night. Keep your head up. Bye.